Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house today as we celebrate Pentecost, uh, the day 2,000 years ago that God sent his Holy Spirit amongst his people. And, and now through his word and his church and through uh, the speaking of his sacraments, man, we get his spirit all the time. Uh, so blessings to you as you receive uh, this word and spirit today and blessings as we uh, gather in his name together. Uh, our service today is uh, Divine Service Setting 3, and that is found on page 203 of your hymnal. And our psalm is Psalm 25. That's in the front of the hymnal, the very front. Kind of goes in order like that. And um, we will be res responsively singing that. And it'll stop at verse 15. So just keep that in mind. It's on the back of your sheet right there to keep an eye on. Um, but that is for you. Uh, blessings as we gather today. We are going to have the ringing of the bells and the singing of our first hymn. Um, but first we rise and greet one another with the peace of God. rise now turning to page 203 for our invocation and our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Father, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to our last life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority... I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. All these look to you to give you their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is taken from Numbers chapter 11, beginning at verse 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Now turning to the front of our hymnals to Psalm uh, 2025, we will read that we will sing that whole verse by whole verse. And since I, I'm looking out in the church, uh, some of my members are out vacationing, but there are a lot of new people in here. So I, I'm going to have to teach you a little bit here about uh, chanting this psalm. So when you get to Psalm 25 in the front there, um, what you want to learn about this is wherever there's a comma, that is typically a breath. Because you're going to run out of breath if you keep trying to sing this, this note for that long. So just when you get to that comma, take a half, half breath, and then we will continue singing it. I will lead it. The organist is going to help us start out. So you'll just hear it and then follow along. But those commas are pretty important. Uh, the other thing is, is at the slash mark, the perpendicular slash, that's where the tone changes a little bit. And then at the asterisk mark, it changes uh, quite differently. So we'll listen to those tones as they're played from the organist right now. She'll run through them twice and then follow along to the best of your ability. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgression. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he is not sinners in the way. He leads the 
the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear Him, and He makes known to them His covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for He will pluck my feet out of the net. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Great job. Great job. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the, and this is the basis for our sermon today. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arab uh, Arabians. We're all hearing them telling in their own tongue the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mock, but others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall come to be, declares the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, that great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We rise now, turning to page 205 for the Alleluia and verse. <laughs> According to St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, this he said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now together we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed, a, a confession of faith, a simple confession of faith for us to confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 497.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As stated before, our text for today's sermon is taken from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And the sermon is entitled, Perfect Communication. Our God is a God of communication. He speaks to us plainly, and He wants to speak to us. And it is really basically because of this, that the Bible and uh, many of our other biblical materials are translated into almost every language on the planet, even the obscure ones. Nowhere does it seem more clearly that our God is a God of communication than here on Pentecost, which we mark as the birth of the Christian church. The Christian church is now the ongoing church, the ongoing working church of Christ, to which Luke alludes to in the very beginning of the book of Acts when he says, in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. The work of Christ continues now through his church. And that work would require the ability to communicate to communicate Christ to the world in a matter that is clear and direct. This sets up today's text for our consideration. Fifty days after Christ's resurrection, the followers of Christ were in Jerusalem, along with a whole lot of other people. But 120 followers of Christ gathered in a house. That's a pretty big house. Some would think that this house was the same house that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. Had to be big enough. What were they gathered there to do? Play kickball? What do God's people do? What did God command his people to do when they were to gather? They were to gather now around his word and sacrament. So it only seems fitting that they would be there for the divine service and having the Lord's Supper. Otherwise, why would they be there? During this gathering, a special manifestation of the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. Tongues of fire rested upon their heads. There was the sound of a great rushing wind, and it drew the people of Jerusalem to where they were. The followers of Jesus and perhaps only the disciples or the apostles were praising God with loud voices. They were praising God and speaking of all that God has done for the world in Christ. And miraculously, everyone in the crowd heard them speak in their own native language. We don't have how the mechanics of this worked whether the apostles suddenly were speaking in all the different languages that they previously had not known, or if the people were miraculously translating it in their ears. We don't know that. We have no way of knowing this. But that's not the key. The key is is that they had perfect understanding. They were hearing about what God had done for them through Christ. And they were understanding it perfectly. It's important to make it clear 
that the tongues or languages here in our text were existing human languages. This is not some special type of alien Klingon language. Not some special unintelligible Holy Spirit language. This text is clear, crystal clear on this point and even mentions several of the languages that are spoken. Each one of them was hearing in their own language. They were amazed and astonished as we would be if we were there. Are not all those speaking Galileans? You know those kind of yahoos up that way? And how is it that we hear in our own language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and all the rest. God is not a God of confusion. He's, he, he does not want to be a God of chaos. He did not create chaos. His desire is clear communication for his people. This is very different from the supposed speaking in tongues that we see in the Pentecostal church and, and in the charismatic churches of old. They're still out there, but I'm even hearing it more often in the non-denominational churches. So that's why we're talking about it. This is not a question of interpretation, but the clear reading of the text. Our text is talking about existing human language and it prohibits this modern, so-called, speaking in tongues. The things we see that are over-spiritualized in our charismatic circles, a speaking without someone interpreting, without the clear indication of what is being spoken, that did not happen on Pentecost. It's clear. Why is it important? Because in our day and age, in our time, many false teachers are, are wanting to be led by the Spirit, wanting to be renewed by the Spirit, wanting to follow the world and this new spiritual age. And what do we hear from Scripture? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17, very clear. But the truth is, the church is the people of God, the believers in Jesus Christ, and they need to hear it clearly. Believers do not exist. We do not exist apart from hearing the word of God. If people are not told about Jesus Christ and what Christ has done for them, they cannot believe it. They cannot believe it. So while the church is the people of God, it never exists apart from the marks of the church, the word and the sacraments where those words are given. Without the message that Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world to take away your sins, that, the, that Christ died to give us life and salvation, Without those words, the church does not exist. And so we see this at Pentecost. The crowd gathered because of some complex miracle was taking place. The text says they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? And if you have so some of my new people, are so new guys in here, you've not been Lutheran that long, or maybe you're thinking about it. But that is this, that's a straight-up Lutheran text. What does this mean? We're always asking, what does this mean? But the people do not come to faith until Peter preaches the word of God. Until he preaches the word of Christ to them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. This is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Peter starts in the Old Testament and applies the Old Testament scripture to what Christ has done and is doing today. Peter preached the law and the gospel in another classic way that we would say is almost textbook Lutheran in its uh, fashion. 
when they understood what God had done for them, what God had done for them through Christ, and what they have done themselves, which was sin, that they themselves in their sin killed Christ. At Peter's teaching and preaching, they were cut to the heart. They were cut deeply open. And they asked Peter, what shall we do? And Peter told them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We didn't get to read that in our text, but it comes later. Simple words. Repent and believe in Jesus. 3,000 people believed that day. 3,000 at those simple words. But in our time, we are told by many to go chasing after these gimmicks. Chase after the gimmicks of the world or methods of the world. And you too can grow your little tiny church into a great big mega church if you have the right gimmick. Whole schools of thought and academic departments are dedicated to this false teaching. And what is all too often forgotten is what we see on Pentecost. The church grows because people hear the clear, unadulterated word of God. It is not a matter of some secret handshake or some secret process or some secret words. It's not about uh, baiting and switching. We're going to give you something fun because we're going to give you something horrible like being a Christian is horrible. No, it's pretty great to be a Christian. And we're going to tell you that up front. We don't need to get you excited with all the other stuff because we have Christ. It's not about those things. It's about communication. God communicating us through his word and through his holy scriptures. It works that way. It worked that way for Peter. And if Peter, as an apostle, brought people to faith by using the simple words of God, how much more will it work for us who are not apostles? God speaks to us in human language by using words and sentences. God speaks in in all languages. He is not like Allah who can only speak in Arabic. Oh yes, Arabians hear the word of God in Christ, but also through the language of the Cappadocians and Pontius in Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and even that little part of Libya. You know that tiny part of Libya that that belongs to Cyrene? Even that little bitty part gets to hear the word. And they get to hear it clearly. This then is what focuses us on Pentecost. Why Pentecost is so important. Why it teaches us that here is where Christ died on the cross and rose again from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins and life everlasting. That is the gospel right there. No matter what else is happening in your world, that is the gospel of your life and your salvation. And yes, we do have to generally prepare people to receive the gospel, and usually that's done by giving them the law. As Peter did, they must see that they are sinners in need of a Savior. We must see that we are sinners in need of a Savior. Because of their sin, because of their sin, They participate. We participate in the crucifixion of Christ. God the Son is crucified on our account. We need to show that to people. We need to tell that to people. We need to help them to understand that sin is really bad. And it goes against God's word and it condemns us. And therefore we need to be cut to the quick whenever that happens. So that we can be ready to hear the message of the gospel so that we can be ready to hear Christ speak to us of his cross of his forgiveness of his salvation given to all who believe 
And it's not only a message for new Christians, right? It's like, how, how great is it that God's, there's so many new faces I'm seeing. How great is it that he's giving new faces to hear this truth? But it's not just for you. <laughs> it's still for the rest of us. Because we all still need to recognize that we are sinners. If I look out at you, I'm not seeing anybody worse than me or better than me. Because we're all sinners in need of a Savior. We all need to be reminded of that. And that, secondly, we need to be reminded that we do have a Savior. And He is Christ the Lord. So the message is clearly communicated through pastors, through parents, through families and friends. The church is established and built up and sustained on the Word of God. And it shall come to pass that in those days, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. Thus, you see, from the very beginning, from its very birth, from the very birth of, this, of the church into the world on Pentecost, the church is about the business of speaking the word of God, the word of Christ. All of the words of Scripture are there at the center for us because they are the words of our salvation. They all point to Christ. It is the word that clearly communicates to you that God has done this for you, especially giving you a Savior. And by his death on the cross and his resurrection on Easter, his ascension that we just celebrated last week, and the giving you of the gifts of Pentecost there, the Holy Spirit coming to you, it is clearly communicated to you that in Christ, you do indeed have the forgiveness of all your sins and the life everlasting to those who believe in him, those who believe in him. Jesus. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. We rise now for the prayers of the church. In our prayers, we have an additional prayer that came this morning. Uh, that is for Dennis Ernie. He's one of our members. Uh, he had knee surgery last Thursday, and now he is recovering from that, so we pray for a speedy recovery for him. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, 3,000 souls were called, gathered, and enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill your congregations, your synod, and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us that the sacraments may be administered faithfully, and many more would be called by the gospel, enlightened with your gifts, sanctified, and be kept in true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sin and raised for our justification. And in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach this truth faithfully and church workers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you have promised that all who drink from your living water will well up to eternal life. Help us show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and live with love toward our neighbor. Remove all pride, prejudice, and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel. Shamefully, but given that we may not hurt, hinder the cause of the gospel shamefully, but give welcome to all people in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service, and we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel, bless our nation, and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow after us, looking always to you from whom these gifts come. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
glorious light in this dark world. You have sent the Holy Spirit to your church as the Comforter. Soothe the wounds of your people. According to, uh, according to your will, bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick. Uplift the depressed. Provide for the poor. Uphold the forgotten and answer the prayers of all who call out to you in aid. Especially for, for uh, Dennis, Dorothy, Dottie, Ron, Catherine, Rick, Beverly, Christy, Rob, Judy, Samantha, Taylor, Doug, Doug, Deb, Russ, Ron, Connie, Cindy, Adam, and James. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, giver of the Holy Spirit, clear away all distractions, that our hearts and minds may be focused on you. As Christ comes to us in the bread, which is his body and the cup of his blood, help us to receive your gifts with faith and to live from them. Receive our praise and thanksgiving together with the tithes and offerings we bring as tokens of our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into, the hearts, uh, into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every evil and terror that we may continue steadfast in the faith. Increase us with love and good works and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death. Obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and we will gather our tithes and our offerings, um, but I encourage you to also grab the attendance books and guest books located in the center aisle, and please fill them out. And since we have so many uh, guests and visitors here today, if you come from another LCMS Lutheran Church, you are free and welcome to come forward and commune with us. If you are, if you are a member of a different faith, we ask that you either stay in your seat uh, and abstain from taking communion with us at this time until we can understand what is going on there for you. Uh, and also, uh, if you do want to still come up and receive a blessing, just keep your arms crossed like this, and we will bless you in, in the baptismal promise that Christ has given you. So those are, the, those are there for you. So uh, if you haven't put your phone number in that uh, attendance book, please do so. And uh, if you want to call from me, and you can see I like to talk, and it'll be a good conversation. All right. Well, I'm going to end right there. <laughs> for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him to death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us by giving your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In these last days, you have poured out your Holy Spirit on your church, that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people, that faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son we may go forth to proclaim his salvations to the ends of the earth. Hear us when we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, Now we hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs>
remain standing as we come to page 211 in the New Caminus, the Song of Simeon. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And receive his glorious benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Congregation may be seated. We're going to get that hymn one day. <laughs> if I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming, that is a most powerful, most beautiful hymn. So we're doing it. Next week. Come back next week. We'll do it again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm looking at first to the congregation if there's any announcements that need to be brought forward. And I see Miss Peggy over here ready to give an announcement. It's a Saturday, June the 10th, and it'll start at 7 o'clock, and uh, we're going to be watching a movie. It's going to be uh, King of Dreams about Joseph. However, before that is a very special activity. It is our second annual Wolf of Ball tournament. <laughs> yes. Yes, I knew you guys would be excited. So here's the deal. For the team, you can have up to five people on your team, but one has to be a school age or a Sunday school age child, okay? And so, uh, she may be a little young. I saw you looking at her. She may be a little young, so, but that's okay. But, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that will be um, first at 7 o'clock on June 10th, and then please come. It's a great time for fun. It's a great time for fellowship, and uh, bring just bring your uh, folding chairs and sit and have a good time. The last time we did this, we laughed a lot. So it was so much fun. So please join us. And um, the second thing I want to talk about is Vacation Bible School. Uh, registration is now going on for that. Um, if you want to fill out these green papers, you may. It's also online. Just go to our Facebook page, uh, the church's Facebook page, and there will be a link to it. And Vacation Bible School is for ages 3 on up to 7th, uh, 8th grade. Okay? Uh, we will be doing Vacation Bible School um, it's a theme. theme. Oh, sorry. Theme is God's Wonder Lab. So it's going to be, oh gosh, we're going to have some science in there. Anything, uh, Grover, are we going to blow up anything? Okay. No. Okay, so we're good. Okay. No uh oh, he's not promising. But you never know what you might see. So please come, uh, volunteer. I still can use some volunteers. And uh, I was talking about Wednesday. Volunteers are getting together to make some of the decorations. We'll do that from 1 to 4. So a lot going on in church. I hope to see you guys. The competitions. Oh, the medals? For the, the medals for Wolf of Ball. Well, I like, you know, I like a good brisk competition. Especially when I win. <laughs> Which isn't often, apparently. <laughs> but nonetheless, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. Um, between the Phantom Fun Night and VBS, I want the junior you here at church. If you have not, if you have left fourth grade but have not yet started high school, so uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth that haven't started high school, June sixteenth, be here at six o'clock. Come pick them up at seven o'clock. We love the next day. The next day. Yeah, it's one. Yes, yeah, seven o'clock a.m. on Saturday. Thank you. So um, I'll have them overnight. They'll be tired and fed when uh, when you pick them up. So. You can't go, Bob. <laughs> so, um, junior youth lock in June 16th, Friday through June 17th, the morning of. Thank you. Thank you. But I didn't get to finish that, that thing. You're going, we're going to get uh, medals for taking first and second place for a wiffle ball. So I'm needing a first. I need, a, I need one of those. So I need, some, I need some ringers on my team. So you guys got any third graders? that are ringers, let me know. All right, uh, another thing that needs to be brought forward, uh, one of our sister churches in our circuit, uh, Trinity Lutheran in New Haven, uh, Reverend uh, Andrew Preuss has asked me to give this announcement to you. Uh, they have uh, rebuilt or brought in a new organ to their church, it's a new, uh, an actual pipe organ. Um, so they are going to have a dedication service and recital at Trinity New Haven and would be honored to have our brothers and sisters from around the circuit to join us on Saturday, June 3rd. That is actually next Saturday, so that's why it's important that it comes in today. To dedicate our new pipe organ. We'll having, we will be having a Vespers service at 4 p.m., followed by refreshments in the narthex and an organ recital in the church. The organ recital will include or our organist, Andrew Fink, along with some other organists from sister congregations, 
including some children who have been taking organ lessons. So please use this to celebrate the gift of God, God's music in the church. Uh, yeah, we gotta raise, if we don't raise up our kids to do these things, we're going to lose our gifts. So uh, I encourage you all to attend that with me, and we will we'll have a good time listening to organ music and, and praising God. I'll see if they can get that hymn that we just sung in. <laughs> Thank you. I, I happened to look back there and I'm like, man, there's like six visitor, five, five, four, four visitor bags. All right. So if you're a visitor, make sure you come through the main aisle. All uh, right. If there are no other announcements, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. What? Wait, 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 Laura. You can see where my loyalties lie, and I, I apologize for that. Uh, but today is also Memorial Day. I, I did a prayer for the people for uh, remember, remembering them. Uh, do we normally sing a hymn for that? My, my loyalties lie with uh, the Lord. But, uh, but there's nothing wrong to praise, uh, give thanks to God for his, for his land. Like maybe God bless our native land would be a good hymn for us to sing together. What number is that? It's in the end of the hymnal. Nine something. Nine sixty-five. So you guys know this one. Huh? Nine sixty-five. Do we have any well this is Memorial Day and and we don't want you to stand up for that, because that'd be just very weird. <laughs> Whenever you are ready, Laura. 